Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the next episode of The Last of Us Part 2. It's been about a week since I've uh, had an episode. It's been a minute. Sorry about that ladies and gentlemen. But, you know. Uh, it's, it's what happens. Sometimes you just get sidetracked with work and other things going on in life. It happens. I'm gonna get more consistent with videos and uh, uploading schedule. I'm gonna. I had a few days off, so I'm gonna have some more episodes recorded and pre-uploaded, so it'll schedule automatically. Stay with Shimmer. Yeah. And it's been a minute since we've come back into The Last of Us because we just had this major death, and to one of our characters, Joel, um, it was pretty messed up, pretty sad. Um, we just had a major death of a character. So it's been a minute since we've been back in the world, but um. I remember exactly where we were and where we left off. We are now going into Seattle. This is Seattle Day 1. We're going to trek through to look through the environments, find clues, find out where Abby is located, and, you know, hopefully go there and kill her. Because, you know, that was, was messed up what she did. And there's another trading card. But we gotta find out where she is first, because right now we're just kind of in Seattle and we're kind of lost, so we gotta find some resources. And luckily, we find a map of Seattle. Thankfully, this will help us out. Hmm. Highways, roads, side streets, and then all the main destinations. That'll help us. Big time. Anything good in there? Found an old tourist map. Well, that's something. Yes, it is something, Nina. Something we can use. And then this is me just checking the area to make sure we have everything because this is my second playthrough of Last of Us Part 2, so I want to make sure I have everything because it's New Game Plus. And I'm just checking everywhere. I tried to get all of the workbenches and safes done on this run, but I missed about three saves, which sucked. So I have to go back in later and get them at a later date. But I did get a couple of trophies that I didn't get on my first run, and you'll see those pop up in later episodes. And I do take this. I do take my sweet time to explore through Seattle to look through every location, because there's a lot of places that. I haven't seen or know of really. One of them I already did explore and get the trophy for, which is actually a really, really cool reference to another video game that Naughty Dog has done. Sure seems quiet. Yeah. Think about how well we hide our lookouts. I know. That's what scares me. Yeah, people are people are sneaky in this world. They'll do anything they can to hide and to get whatever they need. We learned that in the in the first game with the ambush when we started driving into the main city and this guy tried to say that he was hurt and Joel knew it and he ran him down and it was an ambush. So that was when Allie was first really in Joel's life, at the very, very beginning of their story. Can't believe that was already one just one game ago. Oh, set the QZ. Back in 2013. It's crazy. Watch the high spots. These were soldiers from the QZ. See the Fedra uniforms? You think it was the WLF? Yeah, and they left them here. Like a warning. That's fucked up. Looks like there's some cracks up there. In the wall, up above. You see it? Yeah. Not sure how we get up there, though. We'll figure it out. WLF. Trespassers killed on sight. WLF. That's friendly. At least we know we're in the right place. Yes, we do. Where is everyone? They put up this sign. It means there's got to be a way in. Trespassers killed on sight. How many of you are there? How many people have you killed? Can't be sure it was Tommy. I haven't seen other people in two weeks. Fingers crossed. Yep. We gotta see where Tommy is, too. Hopefully he'll make it out okay. Because, you know, we don't want all of the 
the Miller bloodline to be gone. So. And it's always interesting to go through these buildings, too, because this is a quarantine zone that's been abandoned and destroyed by the Washington Liberation Front. It's interesting to go through everything and see what's see what was left behind because there's there's other types of world building too when you scavenge through built through the buildings and you find notes and audio recordings I don't there's no audio recordings in this game sadly because I found them to be really interesting in the first game kind of sucks that there's none really in this game there's just all letters primarily there's a lot of reading when you get to the gate look for a soldier named Karen tell him I sent you good luck And that's just me jumping over a gate, even though the door was open. You're always so used to jumping over stuff in this world. You don't. You, you, if you see a door or a doorway, you assume it's locked. And something really cool to point out: the infected. Pick at stage one, two, and three, and four. It's kind of cool that it shows everything. Stage three and four, one, two, and three, and then it shows the images of what it looks like, which is cool kind of cool that we had that image because this is what the world saw they just saw these four cases of infected anything good in there pretty picked over and the infected have evolved in other ways that we have not seen yet because it's now been 24 25 years now since uh since we first saw joel in the first game So yeah, it's been it's been a minute because when Joel first woke up after the after the flashback when his daughter was was daughter was murdered when the outbreak Dina, first happened, help me up here. it was a okay. flash forward of 20 years later, and then this has been an additional four or five years. So it's been about 25 years since the actually I think it's yeah it's been about 25 maybe 30 years since the outbreak I'll keep happened. An eye out. Just see if you can get the gate open from the other side. So Sounds the infected good. have really evolved in different ways since we saw everything in the first game. So there's going to be new classes of infected that we're going to see. And they get a little bit more crazier. Which I appreciate the the diversity of infected <gasps> getting more evolved. Because you, you would think that the infection would evolve if you don't find a cure for it. So it's interesting that they explored more of that. And a lot of the <gasps> new infected is pretty terrifying. One of them in particular we're going to see later on in the game we'll probably never ever see again in the whole series because it would make sense and it would take so much time for it to happen and you'll see what I talk about when we get to that area but that's like that's a long time from now but you know just getting just talking about the infected classes I'm good just almost died almost died but I'm good okay get down this area and we get into behind the, the quarantine zone get that gate open and see what else we can scavenge around and find to get closer to where Abby is I always love doing this too. I love that you can now do that because you couldn't really do that in the first game to get around locked doors. They were all uh, all the doors were around solid building walls, so you couldn't find things out. And then there's a bunch of okay. codes to different gates. Written. And thankfully, they still work. Surprisingly. Got a bigger operation coming up, and Isaac wants us to scavenge any remaining supplies from downtown. The Saravena base. That's something. Now, I will say this too Isaac is really intimidating. And I'm really pissed off that they did not use him as much as they should have in this story. 
We'll see him when we get into the later later part when we get That's to the the WLF. He's the main head honcho of that group. He is scary as shit. They should have seriously used him more in the story. Because his character was so intimidating for the scenes he was in. They really, really should have used him more, and I was really sad that they didn't. That was my only major problem with the story, is that a couple of characters weren't really imp uh, they weren't really used to their full potential, and it was just, that was the one part that bothered me. Uh, okay. It's not to say that all the new characters didn't have enough time to shine, and they do, and I appreciate what they did with them. But there's just small parts of the story that don't really work for me, which makes sense to the majority of people. But that's why I think the gameplay in this is 10 out of 10, and the story in the first game is 10 out of 10. Hey, everything okay? What was that sound? I got that gate open. Gotta figure out this one now. Well, we believe in you. Thanks. And these are just small um, puzzles to get gates open, which is really, really easy. This is when puzzles are really not that difficult. This is when uh, Naughty Dog really did a good job with using puzzles to progress uh, their games. They learned it a lot in the Uncharted series, and then they 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 progressed it in uh, Last of Us. So this is when the puzzles drive the story forward. Like you have to get this door open, and it doesn't feel like it's too challenging or too or like stupid like it doesn't feel like this is worthless like some of the puzzles in the early uncharted games kind of felt like you had to do them just for the sake of doing them they didn't feel like they really belonged half the time even though that was a uh, fictional action adventure series this is a lot more grounded in reality where there's some fi elements of fiction to it of course because you know it's a, you know infection world has ended and all that Ooh. stuff but the characters in the writing is a lot more grounded to reality, so there's a lot more of a realistic approach when it comes to aspects of the story and the gameplay, of course. Even though I know this code, I think it's wrong, actually. I think I put it in incorrectly. What am I missing? Yes. Okay, yeah, so I, I did it wrong the first time. Now that we got that door open, we can now proceed. Now what? I found a note back there. Had some codes on it. it. Says there's a WLF safe house at some place called Saravina Base. Saravina. So we find it? Hopefully we find our first WLF. Get them to talk. Go from there. Let's do it. You'd be really surprised, I think, that a lot of these buildings are just like just solid concrete blocks with textures on or, with textures on them but no you can go in a lot of them and it's pretty cool like it has some uh, elements of open world in a way even though it is linear you can you can choose to not progress the story for at least 25 40 minutes and, oh, and shit, search look. everywhere if you want to Saravina hotel well, that's got to be it <laughs> You can easily blow through this entire area and just get the gate okay. open and move on, but you'll miss out on a lot of stuff. This, uh, fuck Fedra gate. <laughs> fuck Very Fedra creative. gate. I love that. Gets right to the point. Let's get closer and scope it out. There's actually some story elements that you know you'll code? miss if you don't. You know what I found has a bunch of them. If you don't actually do some of the but extra building, we need to extra get buildings. To the gate first. There's actually some story elements you're actually gonna miss. Which I actually missed on my first try, my first playthrough. Even though I really took my time going through Seattle in this area, I missed a couple of areas. And then when I went when I went back, I found them because I, I looked up where they were. I said, "Oh yeah, go here okay. and you'll see this." And I'm like, go. "Okay, I'll check it out," because there's a lot to this area. Oh. 
Ah, it's out of gas. God damn it. <laughs> I know, right? What do we do now? Oh, shit. The note. What? The note mentioned that there's gas in the courthouse garage and the dome. All right. Courthouse garage and the dome. Then let's so what's go. the plan for finding these places? We ride around and see what we see. You think Tommy came through here? But he did. <sighs> and here's the main Seattle area. So, where are we? This was really amazing to see when you first play this because it just looks like so real. Pretty sure, we're here. Ah, uh, nice. I'll mark it up as we go. Like I'm, I'm serious when I say this. I really, really think Naughty Dog is like in competition with Pixar, but all in the video game industry, it's ridiculous how real everything looks. And they pay attention to so many fine details, like Pixar does in their animated what movies. The hell it's incredible. Here? I'm guessing the military bombed the shit out of this place. Why would they do that? Well, they would sometimes destroy parts of the city that were lost to the infected or the rebels. That seems like overkill. Well, it usually worked. On the infected or the rebels? Both. Both. Shit. Believe me. You're lucky you didn't grow up in a QZ. I'm starting to get that impression. This is one of the areas that I did not find out about until later. And I'm glad I figured out about it because you get a trophy and there's a really, really cool reference to a video game. And you'll know what it is immediately if you know the franchise. And I thought it was kind of funny because I actually did the same thing in my Last of Us short film before this game came this out. Cool. I thought it was kind of funny actually. Holy shit, we might get crushed kind of way. Relax. It's probably been like this for years. It's not going to collapse today. I think. <laughs> it finished last word if it thing. did. And of course, what's this area going to be without infected? We're going to drop down and see the infected in here. I'm just getting my weapons ready. Look at this. Got an area over here we got to get these guys taken care of. Clickers. Clickers are a lot more dangerous on hard. Because, like, if you're in their line of sight, they can still hear you. And what I'm doing here, I have one explosive shot, I track them all, shoot it, and it explodes. And I take out a few runners and do, and do a lot of damage as well. And I didn't have any bottles, so that's why I threw a smoke. A smoke bomb. And that was close right there. Surprised he didn't grab me and kill me because that happened twice. That's why I had a cut in the beginning. And then right here I'm choosing whether to shoot him with a pistol or something else. So I have to watch out and back up so I can get a headshot. Because if not, I'm wasting ammo. Because the clickers are wearing armor. Because they were originally SWAT okay. members or Federal soldiers, That's all of them. so they're wearing bulletproof armor. Let's put the body armor. They don't look like soldiers. Well, they probably were. Yeah. Not sure. They probably were. Where are we? You think this is the bank? Looks like a bank. Ooh, fancy schmancy. <laughs> There's a small area you can scavenge and get some more material, which is always nice. Believe it or not, it the game does reward you for going out and searching all areas. The first Last of Us did that as well. When you really took your time in an area and you tried to scavenge everywhere, you would get rewarded with extra ammo or even like a cloth like that for like a, a Molotov or a health or a health kit. You you get rewarded for stuff like that, and I love when when the developers do that stuff because it shows hey. You're willing to take extra time out of your out of your busy day to to scavenge around building to scavenge around buildings. I think these body armor guys were trying to rob the bank. Oh shit! So like I think movie. that's nice that they do that. Which one? Granted, most games do that, but still, you know. Oh yeah, love that movie. 
And now that we have the combination to the vault, we can, we we can get it open. I also like the manual input when it comes to codes and um, uh, vaults, because all you had to do in the le first Last of Us was just find the code, and then Joel just automatically put it in and open the door. So I, I like the extra amount of um, input from the player. It makes you feel like you're actually cracking the safe open. It's cool. Thanks, dude. Got more shotgun shells, which is always nice. Well, shell, not shells. It's not plural. Look at all this money. Every bullet helps. The bag's full. Man, if we were back in the old world, whew, we'd be rich. Yeah. Then you'd be investigated by the IRS and taken to prison. But you know, not. It's like not not your problem. <laughs> I wasn't even supposed to be here. Neil wrote me and said the police would be here too busy. They locked. They took my, my guys. Locked me in here. The cops will be here soon. T Kyle Peters are fucking cowards. They tried robbing the bank on outbreak day. Probably seemed smart at the time. Yeah. So, the guy just ended up killing himself because. He just didn't want to take it. He couldn't sit in there forever and starve to death. Just ended up killing himself. Safe deposit boxes are full of some items. And this is the cool part. Right here. I love that Naughty Dog did this. There's Drake's there's Drake's ring from Uncharted. You actually get a trophy for that, which is really cool, but I already got it. Sick Parvis Magna. Nathan Drake's ring. I thought that was so awesome, and I was so mad that I missed that on my first uh, playthrough because I was right next to the entryway, and I didn't think I could go down in this area because it looked like it was a dead end. But I should have just trusted my gut and gone down there and checked it, and I would have ran into it on my first playthrough. But I thought that was so cool. And I thought it was really funny because Naughty Dog referenced Uncharted in Last of Us, and I did the same thing in my short film with the Uncharted 4 necklace, which is kind of a, kind of ironic. It's like different necklace, but same franchise was referenced. I thought it was kind of cool. And then some more infected around here. Sadly, we don't get out of this stealthy because I'm right here next to this clicker and I'm waiting for him to walk forward and then turn his back so I can grab him. But he turns to the left, too, to the right, too quick, and then I end up right in front of him, and, and then he can hear me, and then he goes loud. So, unfortunately, yeah, it didn't really work out. But there's only two infected, so it's not bad. But still, you gotta use at least two bullets. And I think I landed the perfect headshot here. God, yeah, I, yeah, I did. It is like so beyond satisfying when you get the perfect headshot on a soldier or a head or a uh, infected and they just go down. It's so great. Because you're like, okay, one bullet, one life. That's perfect. <laughs> Helps with the resources too. And then when you know that you're done with that area, Ellie, Ellie automatically marks it off hey, on the map. If you lived in the old world, what would you buy with all that money? I don't know. Maybe a big farmhouse? But you can get a farmhouse now. Okay. What would you get? A space shuttle. Mm, oh, that's right. Your astronaut thing. Hey, it's cooler than a farmhouse. Farmhouse is way more practical. <laughs> no. <laughs> Honestly, that's me right now. I'm kind of tired. I actually almost yawned before she did that. I'm actually fighting it right now. I don't want to yawn in the commentary. We only have this a few minutes crazy. left. All right, let's find that gas. But we actually do end up going through all the little mini segments, and then we find the gas. So these next uh, couple parts might be a little bit longer, 
but you know what? It's pretty cool to explore the whole area of Seattle because there's goodies and world building and there's character exchanges that you don't get or see if you don't do it. So I appreciate that much attention to detail. If you take extra time, you get more out of the story, whether those oh, who just want to run to through it. That's why I can't understand people who speed run games like this because it's like it's not about the it's not about finishing it, it's about it being engrossed in the storyline. Even even on Uncharted was like I that. Seen one of these in oh. Yikes. These guys had a bad day. Yeah, he's dead. What is it? Burnt skeletons. Oof. I got torched I out by a Molotov. Kind of like those astronauts. What are you talking about? One of the early moon missions, there was an electrical fire and the astronauts burned up in their capsule. Well, at least they died for something worthwhile. Exactly. These guys were just assholes killed by other assholes. Now that little dialogue exchange was really kind of like, oh wow. Because I don't remember the year that that happened, but I remember it was a big deal when we were in science class. And we heard about that when we were studying space. It was pretty heartbreaking. Follow up on the fight last night. I hear you're concerned and understand you're reluctant. I'm glad you're. T I'm glad you're asking these questions. There are question leaders every day. I'm proud to grow. The soldier you become, and you'll be one day, it's Isaac. Petra's numbers. Yeah. This is when they f were first breaking out of the QZ and they were becoming their own thing so it kind of gives you an idea of where the WLF came from which is kind of cool that, that's why it's always good to take your time and scavenge through everything because you get a little bit more of the world building as to where these guys came from how they came up where they how they started who was the leader so it, it really helps understand what happens in the world because everything happens in the world because of one thing, which is the infect, which is the infection, but everybody breaks out and does their own thing because of different reasons, and a lot of groups began that way. It's kind of how Joel and Tess were in the first game. They broke out and they left the QZ, and then they ran into a firefly, and then it just happened to go that way of the story. But they were leaving on purpose because they hated the the safe zone. So. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, here's the end card for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.